and welcome to Learning Music with Pat. I'm going to complete today what I started last time to show you the instruments that I have set aside because they're so good at teaching specific things that I want taught about the recorder. Now, I have a lot of other instruments, woodwinds instruments, so reeded instruments, you know, saxophones, clarinets, flutes. I don't have an oboe or a bassoon, but I have played them and the other instruments I also have. But I want to bring in the smaller instruments because a lot of people really enjoy playing them. And the other thing is they play very well. A lot of them do very well indeed. And so we have to say that they're regular instruments. Now that some are like toys and some are a little advanced of toys, but you can get smaller instruments like what I call the melody flutes and they can play very, very well indeed. I have four more here that I need to show you that I've set apart for certain reasons. And uh, some of them just a difference in the size. Well, I, uh, this one uh, is a Wendy's flute. I had brought it in before. Very small, but it really plays very, very well. And so this is, you can see the tone holes in the front. You can see the, the labium, the mouthpiece. This is the head joint. Now you wouldn't be pulling this apart. It's designed to look like it has a head joint and a foot joint, but they're all basically one. I wouldn't try to touch this, but it plays very well. It's worth it's worth having. And uh, so I want also, let's see what I have here. I put them in cases mainly for their safety. This is a Sopranino. And it's the smallest it's made for professional work. It's in the key of F and it plays and it's very well and it's very high pitch. And you can see here that I can't pull it apart, but it's a very good sopranino. It looks like it has a head joint, but I couldn't take it apart. And so you notice also that there is a, a double hole right here where that D would be if I were playing it, as if it was a soprano, right here. And there's just one hole on the side for the bottom lowest note. So you have one set of double holes right here where my finger is, and the other set uh, and the other hole is just off to the side. It's just the way it's been designed. It can play anything. It's a very good instrument. Tone hole, a thumb hole in the back. No specific place where you put your right where you put your right thumb. Some have them and some don't, and you just kind of find a place for it. But it's very high pitched, and I don't play it very often. Not because it can't be played, but it's very very high pitched. So I keep it kind of separate. Some of them, whoops, and I just dropped a, I dropped another one, but that's more or less a toy, so I'll leave that on the floor. I don't need it. I'll pick it up later. This one here um, that I have is a Skaggs. Now, I have two or three Skaggs, and I like them real well. They play very well. But one thing that I like about this, one, it's translucent so you can see through it. But if you notice on the top, if you notice on the top, there's a white area. It looks like a white area. It's easily seen because it is white, and it's, it's clear enough so you can see it. I'm going to turn around in the other direction. Thanks, Rick. And this happens to be the block. Remember, the block is the same shape as the mouthpiece. The block becomes a part of the mouthpiece in the back. This is white, but it's white enough so you can see it. And if I turn it to the front, you can see it as well. There would be a little white area. It looks like a white stripe. That's part of the block. And you can see a little bit of it as it, it almost seems to jut out into the labium. The block goes to from the mouthpiece to where the top of the labium is. That's the way it is on all of the instruments. Now you can see it clearly. I've twisted it so you can see it clearly. And it's white. And I'm glad for that. If it was green, it would be harder to see. A lot of times it's the same color as the instrument, but this could be seen clearly. And that, you can see it in the front like a stripe. This becomes, uh, you can see it clearly right there too. That white area, it's the same shape as the mouthpiece. Scoops down in the back 
and then stops right here, right here, and the labium is right here. In other words, when you blow into the air, air into it, it gets as far as this area where the block is, and then there would be, and there's no way I can show you this, a little opening in that block, a little opening, it's like goes all around, it's a, a plastic piece, it has the same shape as the instrument, but there would be a little area where the air where you blow in goes down here and can go out of the labium, but it won't go out the back. So the air is directed, you know, in order to have a, a musician not play an instrument, if they're playing a woodwind or a brass, there has to be a way to direct the air where you want the air to go. The block basically does that, so it doesn't go everywhere. It goes down, and this is also called the windway, where you blow in the fipple mouthpiece is right here, at the top of that block, and then the, it, this curves out a little bit, just a little bit, if you can see that, where my finger is. Maybe you can see it better if I do it this way. It curves out a tiny bit, and then that air goes down there. That, it, that area is called the windway, and then you see it gets down to where the labium is, where my, where my finger is, and the air can go out through the labium. But you can see this uh, is all just a plain tube. You know, it's a plain tube, but it's so easily seen. Uh, the block is so easily seen. You can see it at the top right there. You can see the shape of it. You can see that it's the same shape as the mouthpiece. You can see the mouthpiece curves out a tiny bit, and that air goes down that windway and can come out that labium. So it's really interesting to see some of these instruments that give you a really good teachable moment. That's the reason which I, the reason for my having the skags here. But they play well too, and uh, it, it's always kind of fun to get an instrument that you think might not play because it's not expensive and find out that it plays actually quite well. Now, um, let's see what's in here. I mean, I don't want to get it mixed up. Oh yeah, this is my um, recorder that's made out of two parts that shouldn't be. I, I keep it for a teaching tool. This is a, and it does play, but it doesn't play as well as I'd like. And here's the problem. I had a friend of mine who went to a yard sale. It was a perpetual yard sale. Uh, you could have, you know, day and night it was open. Every day during the week it was open. She said, Pat, I found this recorder. Uh, would you want me to pick it up? So, of course, I had to pick it up, and, and I reimbursed her for it. It wasn't very expensive, and uh, I thought about $15 or so. And I says, well, a wooden recorder that's good for $15 is really a deal. I started playing it, and it, it, it kind of squeaks, and it kind of squawks, and it didn't play quite right, and I couldn't understand it. And then I realized that the bottom part has a different wood than the top part. Somebody, probably a child doing a prank or something, took the bottom of one instrument and the top of another instrument and put them together. So even if they were made by the same company, and they're not, probably not, it doesn't fit quite right. You can't put, even if you have two instruments from the same company, you should not mix the, the instruments together. They don't quite work right. You know, it's like they have a sense that, uh, that they can't play. This is one type of wood, this is another type of wood, and if I can get it to show you, you can see there's actually a difference in the color of the wood. I don't know if that shows up or not, but it is there, two different types of wood. So I keep it as a teaching uh, tool so that people will know. In fact, they're both made in Germany. One is called a Honer. This a Honer is a good name, by the way. It's a very good name in instruments. And the other, it just says that it was made in West Germany. So you have two different instruments put together as one, and it just doesn't work out very well when you start to play them. 
even if they were made by the same company, which in this case was not the case. So uh, it, it, it's just kind of a reminder. Children sometimes do unusual things with instruments uh, that they shouldn't be doing, and as, the instrument pays the price for that. Now, I have um, this one here. Oh, I've already shown this was by Sopranino. I have this one here. This is another one. The, I, this is a Renaissance recorder, uh, made and styled like, a, like a, a recorder would have been in the Renaissance. Now, I have to be careful of this because it is an LMI, and they do put out good instruments. But I played it one day, and wouldn't you know, the whole top came off. And I thought, wow. And there it is. The top came off. It just, it just won't stay. I talk about the fipple mouthpiece. This is it. This is a fipple mouthpiece. And I thought, wow, this is interesting because now I can actually see, people can see what I'm talking about. Let me put it here. That white part, that's the fipple right there on top. That's the fipple. And uh, I'll just turn it around. And then usually you don't see it because you're not going to pull the top. Uh, this is like a covering. The mouthpiece is like a covering for that fipple. And so here it is. I'll turn it around so you can see the top of it. This is what you're actually blowing into. When you blow into the instrument, you're blowing into the cover. This is the cover of it. It's really the mouthpiece, and there's a little crack there. You blow in that crack, but the air is going right in here, and this is the fipple for the mouthpiece. I wouldn't dare to play it because it would fall off. I don't know why they, they, it was uh, glued in or whatever, but usually you don't have anything falling apart like that. But I thought, you know, this is actually kind of nice that this happened because now I get a chance to show people what I'm talking about that they'd never be able to see because I wouldn't break an instrument in order for them to see something. Right there is the fipple. And if I hold it like this, you can see it jutting out, and there it is, the fipple to the mouthpiece. Now, it's a Renaissance recorder, so, um, see, it's, it just doesn't want to stay. But this is the way it was designed. It has a, it, it's obviously a recorder, looks like a recorder, plays like a regular recorder. The design is a little bit different. You don't have a separate foot joint that's all together as one unit. It has a thumb hole in the back. It has a little uh, metal piece, gold metal piece that separates the head joint. But rarely do you find something where the whole thing comes apart like that. But I keep it for a teaching tool, and I think it makes a pretty good teaching tool. It came with its own case, uh, so that, uh, and I keep it in the case. It's always wise, if you're not using an instrument, to when you're not using it, put it in its case. Why do you want to keep it out? Sometimes it's a case of it's easier just to pick it up and play it than it is to worry about the case. But the problem with that is you can also damage an instrument very easily. This I brought, this is just a toy. It plays though. It has everything that the recorder has. In the back, it has a little tiny a little tiny block. It does act like a block. In the front, it has a little tiny labium. It has a thumb hole in the back, just like the recorders have. It has tone holes in the front, just like the recorder has. It's made just like a recorder, simplified maybe, but it, and it, it plays a few notes, two or three notes. I mean, it's not spectacular. It's more or less a party favor. But I was amazed when I saw it because it so duplicates with the way that the recorders are actually made. So I've kept it for that reason. It's just a, it's just an interesting little thing. So I'll put that right here. 
Now, um, you've seen most of these. I've shown them to you before. The instruments that I usually use are going to be Casio or Yamaha. And Casio and Yamaha are very excellent instruments. There are a lot of really good ones on the market. I have never had a Casio or a Yamaha uh, do anything or, or let me down in any kind of way. And they're very nicely designed. They play beautifully. They play octaves beautifully. And you see, this, this is a regular instrument. This is not a toy. I'll probably spend the rest of my life, and maybe in my, on my gravestone, the the recorder is not a toy, it's a real instrument, and you can see that it is, and it plays really beautifully, and I use it a lot. I've noticed lately that with orchestras and, uh, and bands and so forth that we are getting more of the, uh, of the simple instruments, the tin whistles, the penny whistles, and all of that that I brought in before in, and they should not be discounted. I, I heard a, a person who was a newscaster on a Massachusetts state say, well, the recorder isn't even an instrument. And I was so tempted to write her a letter and say, you know, you're wrong. All you have to do is look into it and understand that the recorder has a history. It plays music. I, I actually arrange classical music for recorders, and they play beautifully. But this is the kind that I usually use. It's, it's not a student model. It's a regular model. It plays two octaves clearly and well and on pitch. That's the kind of thing that I use. The others I use as well, but those are the best ones. Now, how do you clean them? How do you work with them? Well, I have a bunch of cleaning solutions here. What you do, there are actually two types. There are the types that have like this, this fuzzy on top, and those are the types I like the best. You can take an instrument and you can just move it up and down from the bell on up, or you can take the instruments apart and do it individually, and it absorbs the moisture that you have when you're playing the instrument. I think these are the best. Usually, though, when you buy an instrument, you don't get those. Usually, you get something like this. This looks like a little needle. If I turn it around, you can see the opening right there. It's got a little slit in it. And all you have to do is put a piece of material, I put just a little piece of tissue in this one, this is a smaller one, and the tissue, or, or a piece of cloth is actually what would be recommended. This is small enough that I just use tissue. And you put it through the needle, and you use it in the same way. You move it up and down, and, and the uh, cloth, or whatever you have in there, will clean out the instrument. You should clean the instrument and wipe it out of moisture every time you play it. But I like the other one better. But the, the, these are cheap. I mean, these are very cheap. This one came with the green skags that I showed you. The thing is, they can make a little tiny indentation in a, in a case and put one of these in it, and it practically costs nothing. It practically takes up most, uh, no space at all. And all you do is provide for the tissue or whatever you want to put in it so that you can, can use it as a cleaner. But those other ones with the little fuzzy tops are actually better. And I think what you can do is you can get them in different sizes. I've seen them that are pretty huge, that are used for like tenor saxophones, bass saxophones, and all of that. Now what I like to do is I like to bring in uh, all the instruments I haven't had. I didn't bring in, for these three sessions, I didn't bring in any of the ocarinas or the melodicas or anything like that. Sometimes I collect pictures of instruments because if I don't have an instrument, a picture is as good as, a, as, as a, a seeing it if you have no other alternative. So why would I do it? I am amazed, and why do I do it so often? I am amazed at the amount of people that don't recognize instruments when they see them. I was doing a solo on a bass recorder. Now that bass recorder is a good three feet long. I mean, we're talking a big instrument. It's a folded bass. It's the largest one that I have. And someone came up to me later and said, you did such a good job on your French horn. I looked at a French horn. I didn't play a French horn. A 
French horn is round and it's got valves, you know? The record is up and down and you use your fingers. I've had them called a trombone. I had one of my recorders called a trombone. Oh, you did so well, I didn't know you could play the trombone that well. Trombones have got slides, you know? Although there is such a thing as a trombone, a valve trombone that has a slide, but you don't use the slide, you use the valves instead. That's rare, but they do exist. And I'm thinking, how can people mix them up so much. Okay, I'm going to show you something. I hope this works. This is an accordion. I'm going to try something with it. It's a birthday card. This is what an accordion does. You, you, isn't that something? I got a big kick out of that when I bought it. You use the, whoops, I better stop this. The battery will run out pretty soon if I keep doing it. But at any rate, you use that bass and you pull it back and forth and you use, uh, you know, you have your keyboard here and you have your other hand holding the bass and uh, holding where the uh, accordion part is and, and uh, moving it back and forth. Other instruments, and uh, I have them, but I don't always bring them in. The flutophone right here. This is a recorder. Uh, this is a sometimes called a tin whistle, or a, an Irish flute, or a penny whistle, but it, it it's, uh, plays very well. It's a simple instrument, but it plays brilliantly. And here you have the tonette. You have the regular flute, and you can see on top that lip plate, it's more it's easier to see in this drawing than it is in the instrument I brought in last time with a little hole for the mouthpiece and around it is a little raised area. And I had one student that that raised area came off. She lost the lip plate. I don't know how that would ever happen, but it did. And this is the, so this is the flute, the song flute, uh, Sasuto, regular uh, uh, flutes, many of them that I've brought in of different colors like the Dixie and the, and the Melody and so forth, and the flutophone. And you have all of those and they're all legitimate instruments. And so if you take care of them, an instrument will last forever. It'll last a long time. I know I do have a saxophone that's older than I am. And I think it's suffering some metal fatigue because I can't really keep it in pitch, so I don't use it anymore. But it is an extremely rare saxophone. I have all kinds of instruments. I have over 300. I sometimes go ahead and catalog them because I don't know what happens, but instruments are drawn to me or I to them. But occasionally an extra one slips in. I bought three skags. When I bought the skags, I bought three of them. I like the different colors. People like the colors of the instruments, and I think when I had a display, uh, when I did a display uh, for one seminar I did, somebody came up and said, look at the color, look at the color, look at the color, which is why I brought in so many of the melody flutes that come in such brilliant colors. You are attracted to the music, you are attracted to the instrument, and I think you're also attracted to the color of it. So this is just recorder and melody flutes. I didn't bring in the ocarinas, I didn't bring in the melodicas, I didn't bring, uh, bring in and some of the other instruments that I have, some of the rare ones and some of the large ones. Uh, but, but at any rate, this is kind of a, a, a show in terms of letting you see so many of the different varieties of instruments. So we'll be doing something else next time and uh, hopefully you'll join me and we'll get back to how to learn reading music and so forth. But if you ever have any questions, please email them and I'll answer your questions on the air. So please join me next time.